I'm now going to turn to our next speaker who joins us online, online from Nairobi. We have Dr. Maria Cristina Zucca, who is the head of the Pollution and Health Unit Chemicals and Health Branch at UNEP. Um, Cristina, you're very welcome. The floor is yours. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Um, I'm extremely happy to be in this meeting, and I would like to start with a big thank um, message for the organizers of this uh, prestigious uh, Uppsala Health uh, Summit for inviting UNEP. And um, I was also very happy to listen to the presentation from Dr. Netanyahu and also reporting back from the workshops, uh, which uh, were very interesting and very useful actually for our work uh, in UNEP. I'm sorry that I cannot be there with you. I'm based in Nairobi, where we have our headquarters, and uh, still happy to be in, you know, present there even remotely. So, um, in my presentation, uh, I will focus primarily on the pollution and One Health link, uh, and on the opportunities to strengthen this uh, nexus. And uh, a lot of uh, the presentation, uh, the previous presentation will actually help, I think, as I was going to focus on some of these issues. So I think it will be, um, my life will be easier uh, because uh, I can maybe focus just on uh, on some uh, specific aspects that I have um, included uh, in this presentation. Uh, indeed, uh, you have already heard from uh, um, the previous speaker about the One Health definition, which is uh, basically developed by a group of uh, experts in this topic uh, recently. And uh, I just would like to focus on uh, those three um, elements of the figure that show how uh, there needs to be um, a One Health approach uh, across sectors and disciplines and how this is also necessary for the planet for addressing the triple planetary crisis of climate change, uh, biodiversity loss, and pollution. So, One Health is indeed an approach uh, that uh, that can help in that direction. It's also clear that uh, pollution and broader environmental degradation have a direct impact on health across the spectrum of uh, you know people and humans, environment, uh, animals, and plants, and how. Generally, a healthy environment is the foundation for health, for well-being, and for overall, let's say, healthy societies. Okay, so um, there are so many ways in which pollution is relevant to one health, and it impacts the health beyond of humans. I'm not going to go into details of this, but I just would like to show how um, you know, there are so many agendas in the environmental area, for example, nutrients management, in particular sustainable um, nitrogen management being discussed uh, internationally, pesticides, uh, chemicals management, air pollution, plastic pollution, and so on. And uh, normally we see these either as environmental issues or environmental and health issues definitely having an impact on health, but we don't fully uh, maybe appreciate or communicate on the broader One Health aspect. For example, air pollution also has an impact on crops productivity. Plastic pollution also can help uh, the spread of communicable diseases because, you know, it can uh, store uh, water so vectors can be uh, you know, can be conducive to vector-borne diseases and so on. So I'm going to now focus on one specific aspect uh, in which pollution can impact on one health. As you all know, antimicrobial resistance is one of the key topics of, uh, I mean, demanding a one health approach to be addressed. And um, UNEP has recently developed a report that is looking at the environmental dimensions of this problem. On the left of this slide, you see connections uh, between sectors, disciplines, but also the various sustainable development goals, not only on the environment, not only on health, but also on uh, food security, uh, on poverty. And uh, so this shows how everything connects, including uh, social and economic well-being, uh, to this uh, type of global uh, threats. Overall, we can say that this global threat is very closely associated with all three planetary crises. 
and uh, preventing it uh, requires uh, a preventative approach, which includes and actually relies strongly on uh, uh, preventing environmental degradation. I will now go into some more details of um, what are the main sources that are considered as uh, uh, factors for uh, antimicrobial resistance uh, spreading and further augmenting in the environment? Poor sanitation, uh, sewage and waste effluents in municipalities when untreated, uh, effluent from pharmaceutical manufacturing, uh, effluent and waste from healthcare facilities, the use of antimicrobials and manure in, in, in crop production, as well as releases effluent and waste in animal uh, production. So it's clear if we look at these sources that uh, all the sectors involved uh, in those sources of pollution need to also be involved in the solution. So we need to mobilize all these key sectors that go from the economic sector, such as um, manufacturing of uh, pharmaceuticals, um, to the users, such as health facilities and agriculture, uh, to the, the phase of uh, waste and, and wastewater. Uh, we also need solutions across uh, sectors, uh, for example, improving environmental monitoring and surveillance so that we are aware of uh, what is present in the environment and we can also work on, on trends over time. We need collaborative action among the stakeholders. We need to integrate uh, environmental considerations in any antimicrobial resistance action plans or other action and vice versa. We need to make sure that when we do environmental uh, decision-making plans and so on, we also consider the dimension of antimicrobial resistance. And of course, all of these actions need to be supported by legislation, finance, capacities, you know, all those enabling conditions that can make it happen or not. And I'm here using AMR uh, as an example. I think uh, this type of, uh, this, you know, this course can be applied to other uh, issues that all require this type of inter- sectoral and kind of systemic approach. Um, yes, yeah, so this is how I can uh, relate, you know, from uh, looking at the example of AMR uh, and then looking at the broader reasons and, and uh, motivation why a One Health approach is needed actually to address pollution. So it's not just that pollution is a cause of, of problems for One Health, but also the approach being useful. So first of all, it can help us engage all sectors and stakeholders and address the multiple and interconnected sources of the problem, of any problem. Um, it can help address the full spe spectrum of the health outcomes that are associated with certain risk factors, as well as the economic, social, and human rights implications. And here I would like to also connect with the, the speech that you heard yesterday from former Special Rapporteur, given that uh, definitely human rights is, is a very big, big um, agenda uh, relevant for this uh, topic of today. Um, it will help us understand the co-benefits the risks, the trade-offs, uh, so that uh, the solutions can be designed with all of this in mind. And then, of course, in general, you know, it can help us uh, understand that investing in the environment is really investing in, in our health and economy um, for, for, for us and the planet. Uh, now, finally, um, so basically my, my point is that uh, we can further uh, link uh, pollution and health and one health. Uh, there are so many uh, efforts going on that are a good foundation for doing that. Uh, as long as uh, focus is now on implementation and, and investing in in this need for, for connecting uh, agendas. Um, my predecessor already spoke about the, the quadripartite alliance on One Health, where UNEP has recently joined. We have together developed the action plan that she um, referred to with six action tracks. Also within our UN uh, UNEP, uh, we have uh, our environment assembly that has taken many uh, resolutions that are relevant. And one maybe of the initial ones that was really setting us, you know, uh, giving us a mandate to work on the environment and health uh, link uh, was in um, 
a few years back, but uh, these mandates are evolving, looking at biodiversity and health, including a focus on one health. We have a lot of uh, mandates on chemicals and waste management. And I would say uh, uh, one of them is to develop uh, and establish a science policy panel, which was uh, discussed in a workshop yesterday, uh, the INC on plastic, um, and uh, mention was already made of a World Assembly, uh, World Health Re Assembly resolution on the impacts of chemicals, waste and pollution on human health. But I would like to spend a few more words on the global chemical, uh, go global framework for chemicals that was just adopted in Bonn uh, at the end of September. Uh, this is the, the kind of the subsequent fra uh, framework to something that used to be called the SICEM, Strategic Approach to International Chemicals Management. And uh, this is a great opportunity for really tackling all, you know, the main, uh, the most important issues related to chemicals uh, management and related waste. Um, and uh, we also looked at uh, re uh, one regional forum on environment and health that is happening in the European region. We have similar ones in Africa, in Asia Pacific, actually coming up very soon in Indonesia. Uh, we will have a similar um, high level officials meeting of ministries of environment and uh, health within the Asia Pacific region. And finally, G7, G20 agendas have increasingly included One Health uh, and so the environmental dimension within their health uh, tracks. Uh, this was my last slide. I just would like to conclude saying that if we were to you know, build on all of these opportunities for uh, global uh, you know, action to address this nexus, um, I think we would be in, in very good shape. Thank you. Christina, th thank you very much. Um, before we move on to our next speaker, I, I just wanted to follow up with a, a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, you, you talked quite a lot um, about antimicrobial resistance. Uh, are there other links between One Health and environmental pollution that you, you think could be further explored, other examples perhaps? Um, we've talked a lot and heard a lot about endocrine disruptors, for example, here. Yes, of course. I think uh, the, the issue of uh, heavy metals, endocrine disrupting chemicals, uh, we normally look at it from a human health perspective, but definitely there is a, there is a broader health, uh, one health perspective. So I think um, further knowledge and research is definitely useful. Um, similarly, uh, you know, pesticides, depending on the, the context in which it is looked at, you know, uh, there could be more attention on one aspect, uh, human health or the impact on the environment, but connecting the dots would be very useful. Uh, so that action is taken that takes into account all the, all the relevant dimensions. I think plastic is also coming up more in the health uh, sphere as uh, something that needs to be further investigated, uh, both in terms of the direct impact on uh, human health, but also in terms of how plastic in the environment can also further um, contribute to, to, to health issues. Um, there are so many aspects. Uh, also, I would like to connect to the to the agenda of non-communicable diseases that was mentioned um, earlier by Dr. Netanyahu. I think this is a very important agenda. Uh, there are, for example, issues such as mental health. That uh, okay, maybe that's more a human health issue, but again, it's it's a connector for issues that we normally don't necessarily uh, bring together. Th thanks very much, Christina. Um, I think we're going to have a chance perhaps to talk again as a panel a little bit about some of the SDG connections. But I, I actually want to look ahead to next year um, in, I think it's the end of February, um, the United Nations Environment Assembly will, will take place. Uh, and I wonder whether you could tell us anything you know about 
what that will, how that might be a forum to advance. I mean, one of its themes is, is going to be about uh, climate, biodiversity and pollution uh, and effective uh, multilateral governance. But what do you expect to be on the agenda? How could we uh, advance the agenda that we have here on chemicals pollution through the UNEA meeting uh, in uh, next year, the, uh, early next year? Thank you. Yes, so um, of course the resolutions uh, on the table will depend on the Member States' proposals, uh, so we can't really tell uh, exactly what uh, resolutions we are expecting to be uh, adopted or, or discussed even uh, during the, the UNEA. Uh, we are having a meeting of the subcommittee, uh, meeting of the Committee of Permanent Representatives, which is the subsidiary body to, to UNEA at the end of November, where resolutions will be uh, announced. Uh, in any case, for sure, having had um, the adoption of the chemicals framework, uh, sorry, global chemicals framework, um, will most likely be a subject of a discussion. There are some uh, uh, discussions on some other key pollution issues being uh, brought up uh, in that uh, in that meeting. There, besides the official resolutions that uh, will be issued, uh, as usual, we also expect a lot of stakeholders participation, side events. Uh, there will be leadership dialogues focusing on the interconnected nature of the triplanetary crisis and some also uh, <clears throat> issues that cut across. So. I think um, it's, it's a good opportunity uh, to take further agendas that have been uh, there in the past and can now maybe be further connected and strengthened. And especially, it's, uh, I think what we look forward always is that resolutions um, are set up for implementation and um, so that you know, we don't just have an additional resolution, but uh, it should really be there for, for making a change. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. I think it's worth putting into your calendars the fact that UNEA will be there at the early part of next year. And you should certainly be keeping an eye on it, if not actually trying to see it as an entry point, perhaps, to advance some of the action points from the workshops and the discussions that we've been having here today.